Grade A under A. 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 So a lot of newcomers to the website who may stumble across Grade's channel, Grade A under A, may not even realize why Grade was so important in the first place. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Right Opinion, the home of a twat with too much free time. And today we talk about someone who I've had a lot of requests to cover, but never really quite got around to. Well, today, my friends, is the time I finally address it. Now, in keeping with the old routine, we'll begin this video with a nice little story because I love a good story like anyone else. When I was growing up, I wasn't really the type of person who used Twitter or any of the social media sites that I use today. I was at school and back then the only app that was really considered fashionable was Facebook. Now, this is before Facebook was taken over by mums and their minion memes, but just take my word. At some point, Facebook was cool. I promise, guys. Please don't reject me. At the time, it was cool to follow ridiculous numbers of Facebook pages, and before they were taken over by cash farm sponsorships, they had the capacity to be pretty funny, to my juvenile brain at least. However, it was one day that I clicked on one of the videos, I highly doubt I could find it now, but I remember it being this page called Unilad, and it was this post with this guy, and he had this really strange accent, talking about manly drinks versus girly drinks, basically mocking the gender stereotypes behind alcoholic beverages. Why is there such a thing as girly drinks and manly drinks? Girly drinks are sweet, fruity, tasty drinks that actually taste nice. Manly drinks are just drinks that taste like lighter fluid. And to be honest, I didn't really know what to think. It was all right enough, and I did agree with the sentiment I'd personally take cocktails over beer any day. Either way, I didn't really think too much about it. My life had very little to do with YouTube back then. However, that man in the video was Grade A Under A, or Grade for short. He is a commentator with a very distinct style. And I'll talk about the styles that he was inspired by in a bit. But as you can see from that clip, it bathes in the rather amateurish charm. Currently, Grade sits on just shy of 3.5 million subscribers and is very prolific in the commentary community for both positive and not so positive reasons. But I didn't know that back then. I was just another pleb. Fast forward a couple years and I was much more engaged in the commentary community. All this drama with Leafy was transpiring. I wasn't really an avid view of him, but I was thoroughly involved in the whole feud with Keemstar and I remember really rallying behind Leafy. I think I even sent him an email in support, which was incredibly sad. Not just the sentiment of it, but the fact that I used email. I'm like Benjamin Button because I used to be a boomer and now I'm an epic woke man. And then iDubbbz' content cop dropped and I had my perception completely 180'd, everything I thought was true was not, and iDubbbz did a decent job at destroying Leafy, who then managed to destroy himself with his own response video, proving he was well out of his depth. But that, my friends, is a story for another time. Grade was dragged into all of this because he'd made videos on the situation and jumped on the Keemstar hate train. In fact, he'd been quite involved in the drama, until the content cop in which he kind of just slid out the back door. I wonder why. And after a few more months of videos, he was gone. He would just kind of moved on. There were a few thought pieces asking where he'd gone, how he'd fallen from grace, how he'd lost his groove, and so on. Everyone kind of knew he'd return. And at the turn of 2019, he did. For a bit. How long he'll be around, I don't know. Honestly, he's probably left already. But at the same time, his return did complete an arc that I felt necessary to make this video. I always felt there was more to his story, because my two experiences with his content were radically different, covering themes that could have been related to a different channel. My perception going into this is that of a person who became something else than he initially set out to be. From that person on my Facebook feed, it never felt like he was setting himself up to become another channel caught up in the drama. So today, and probably next week as well, if you're not familiar with the tale of Grey Day Under A, I want this to be a learning experience. Not just for you, but also for me. We're going to understand his rise, his peak, and even his fall. But we're not just going to be documenting how it happened, we'll be asking why it happened. And maybe providing some opinions on the whole situation along away. Let's just hope they're the right ones. Are you ready? Good. Let's go. Grey Day Under A started his channel in January 2013, back in the days before any real commentary community was particularly well defined. At the time, a lot of the largest creators were comedians. A lot of these were skits and sketches, people like Niga Higa, Steve Cardinal, you know that guy who did 
songs in real life and chat roulette versions of songs. There would probably have been copyright claims of shit. Uh, Jenna Marbles, Bad Lip Reading, Smosh, Retin Link, and plenty, plenty more. The quality was in the individual's videos and the value held within them rather than just the channel. That's not to say these people didn't have a personality, they did. But it was channeled more into constructing a persona for certain purposes rather than necessarily feeling the authentic connection. There was rumblings of some commentary in the form of more political content, but not everyone was really looking for that. In fact, if you wanted a connection to a creator on a more personal level, then you'd have to look towards the gaming content. And I'm not saying that gaming content typically had people learning that much about the person, but at the end of it all, a lot of gaming YouTubers did tend to be pretty genuine in their reactions, and that led to a lot of diversity in the actual delivery. I discussed it briefly in my Toby Turner video. Back then, if you had something going on upstairs, you could sit down and play a game and there would be an audience if you were competent enough. And that's why you would likely find a lot of modern commentary audiences probably watch gaming videos at one point. I know I did. Do I sound like a huge epic gamer? No? Well, I am. Bitches. Commentary wasn't really going to emerge until 2015, and yet Great is a very interesting case because he emerged before that. How exactly did he do that? Well, the only real genre that had established itself at the time with a firm basis in opinions was the film and music criticism genre, and that still had a long way to go, but by 2013 there was a fairly nice assortment of critics in these circles, and I want to take this and then apply it to someone who I know as a dose of Buckley, and what he did was typically a mix of criticism, but also commentary with a comedic stinging tone to it. He always described himself as a comedian primarily, and I do have a lot to say about him as well, but you can definitely see where these various roots were in Gray's content. Gray was a real mix of comedy, commentary, but also one more component, which was story. And I've spoken about story time animators before, but there is a distinct similarity in Gray's early content to many of the animators that we see nowadays. Story time animators typically run a structure where they speak with a narrative, they set the scene, and then they reenact the scene, typically in a comedic way that entertains the audience. However, with all that said, Gray still had to convince his viewers that his content was worth watching, and that means not being absolute crap. Grey Day and Under A were the two characters that represented him. On one side you have the Grey Day, the smart, successful side, and on the other side is the Under A, the underachiever, the scruffy, lazy character, and he wanted to present both of these sides in his channel. When watching Grey's first video, Nine Things I Hate About The Barbershop, this star becomes quite clear. He talks about what he doesn't like, and then he'll provide a demonstration. However, whereas with animators, some of the appeal comes to balance between the star and the persona, Grey tends to discard elaborate visuals for an extremely simple style, thus focusing a majority of the draw on his own delivery. And although this video didn't initially grab traction like the videos we'll talk about soon, we can actually witness some very successful comedy. It's simple, to the point, and over the top. In many ways, Grey's channel was an amalgamation of various genres that were currently prevailing. He was a comedian, but he was also a storyteller who was conveying his own personal experiences, albeit in an exaggerated manner, tapping into the relatable frustrations of the daily life and applying a little bit of attitude to give him the edge. And plenty of people had the exact same thoughts about him. For example, everyone goes to school. What makes Gray's experiences or thoughts on it remotely exceptional? Well, it's the energy he brings and the fact that people like hearing him talk about it. And that's a genuine talent. Here's a clip from his first upload. So the guys start cutting your hair and about halfway through it starts to look good. It starts to look really, really nice. But by the end of it, it looks dog shit! What did you do? I, I blinked! I blinked to me! And my hair went from amazing to shit! How did you do that? I'm more impressed than anything! Number four. And after he's ruined your hair, he has the nerve to look you in the eye and ask you, What do you think, mate? And you tell him it looks good! Every time! Number five. And then you pay him for it! And you pay him for fucking your hair up! Then why did I do that? I should have told you no! You're not getting my money, you can't! Look what you've done! Give me a wig! A lot of the best comedy comes down to rhetoric. Anyone can think of a funny punchline or a decent joke here and there, but what makes the greatest comedians great is the fact that they can take a story and they can tell it in a funny way. How does Gray do that? Part of it is the articulation. Gray has a great technique of expression. His skewed accent 
does help in a way, but here what you're doing is he's setting up a story. Let me set the scene. We're at slide four now. We know in the slides before he's shown a few examples. And then for slide four, he changes the style. He provides the setup and he's really satisfied with his haircut and he conveys that with his tone. And about halfway through, it starts to look good. It starts to look really, really nice. And it builds to the payoff because he sounds proper pleased, but we all know he's going to lose his shit and we're anticipating it. And then he snaps. But by the end of it, it looks dog shit. What did you do? I, I blinked. I blinked to me. And my hair went from amazing to shit. How did you do that? I'm more impressed than anything. And he does a good job of providing the viewers with that sense of comedic catharsis. And if you can build up to something and set up some sentiment of nerve in that audience, then you'll make the payoff funnier. Comedy is not just about contrast, but it's about audience investment in that contrast. The other thing I find interesting is he leaves these pauses in the build-up, which leave the sort of dead air with the audience, which, you know, if I did it in my videos, it wouldn't make sense. But in his works, it plays off the tension. Like that in a horror movie. Tension makes the scare scarier, just as it makes the jokes funnier. But that's not all at play here. I recall a very good video by the nerd right, which spoke about Louis CK's talent at the delivery of jokes. And one of the overarching themes is that no word is wasted. And that's something that I describe as perfectly prevalent in great early comedy. And about halfway through, it starts to look good. It starts to look really, really nice. But by the end of it, it looks dog shit. What did you do? I, I blinked. I blinked to me. And not a single one is wasted. They're used either in meaning or in rhythm to contribute to the overall effect. An effect that lets us see the world from a different angle and more importantly, makes us laugh. It's those details which add value to Grade's work, makes it more entertaining and does give him an edge over the contemporaries at the time. Combine that with the rather cheap and simple style, which doesn't distract from his delivery and can often add a snark visual gag or so. It's simple but effective, and I want to make this point, that no one reaches the size of Grade without some kind of unique feature. Grade's initial appeal was a mix of features, which crafted this very distinctive persona. And although I'm sure many of his critics and advocates would argue whether he's actually funny, it's hard to dispute that he was successful, and success has its reasons. But as many will say, success isn't just about being good at what you're doing, you have to be good at selling it as well. And this is where we go into the very weird second stage of Grade's career. Grade's second video was uploaded in April 2013 and was called Girly Drinks vs Manly Drinks, a now infamous video in which Grade rants about how social norms pressure him to avoid consuming drinks that taste nice and push him towards drinks like beer and bitter which affirm his status as a man. It's hyperbolic and ridiculous, but it's ironically decent social comedy with a good dash of humour. And so he released this video, and it didn't do much at all. Actually, it was his second video, YouTube hadn't really paid much attention to his channel, they're probably pushing the newest Rihanna song or something. What was Rihanna doing in 2013? Stay? God, do I feel old. So there is this site called Reddit. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but for anyone who genuinely doesn't follow it, it's basically a site that serves as a collective of forums or what they call subreddits for people to find others who might share interests and then to post in them and maybe comment on them. And this can be basically anything at all within the guidelines, of course, from homosexuality to mean girls. And I'm really not a regular of Reddit, but I know that much. The subreddit that is the focus of this part is r slash videos, which is a forum where people can post content that they like. It is a fairly well organized subreddit with users galore and various tabs that can basically arrange the posts how you would like them. However, the very important tab here is obviously what was called in 2014 the hot tab. Now, Gray's video isn't doing too much. It had been a year and a half since release and yet a user by the quaint name of Bonaboy, lovely, posted his video to the r slash video subreddit with the title as the caption. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a screenshot of it doing the rounds because there weren't any that I could find, but there is one of the post itself very briefly after it was posted, and you can see that it quickly picked up steam. Receiving appraisal from many of the users who enjoyed his crude style in reading the comments, it harkens back to my earlier comparisons with regards to animators too, with many people suggesting that that content would have fit very aptly into the Newground site, a website renowned for the animators it hosted. And that's what this video hit home with. Grey seemed like a throwback creator with a twist thrown in, and the masses had spoken. They decided that this is the content they wanted, but Grey was gone. He had legitimately forgot he even even made a YouTube account. I mean, hell, he didn't even have an avatar. The under A side was clearly taking over. 
In fact, Grade was on Facebook when he saw his video being shared and realized that suddenly he had an audience and an audience to answer to. And as acknowledged in a tweet he'd make a year later, it kicked his channel off. So if Bonaboy hadn't made that post on that Reddit, Grade probably would have never uploaded another YouTube video. And yet, here we are. With the success of his content, Grade made a video committing to more uploads. And unlike 90% of the creators who commit to more uploads before disappearing off the face of the earth, he actually stayed true to his word. For now. And we witnessed some spicy content. His video following this was known as the Paralympics, and this is where Grade begins to really cement that persona. I've spoken about how his content can be funny, but being good and being popular are not the same, and having mass appeal can often mean you might sacrifice niche qualities that you may take preference to. But Grade was very consistent. He took a perspective of great ignorance. Now that might sound like a criticism. It would be if I went to Grade's channel looking for insightful commentary or some bold truth teller, but you don't. You go for crude jokes from a judgmental twat, and the thing about ignorance is that for many people, it is relatable. Most people don't know much about a lot. Doesn't mean they're stupid, they'll have a few subjects in which they specialize in due to career reasons or specific interests, but ignorance is relatable in a way. And so you have videos that may not be completely accurate, but you get the impression that they're quite aware they're not. Because he's putting on a stupid voice, he's allowed to be stupid. But at the same time, he's playing with the cynical, judgmental thoughts that cross many people's minds. Like, do horse jockeys even do anything? Surely it's the horse that needs to be disabled. The dumbest thing on earth! Paralympic horse riding! The reason it's so dumb is that it's not the horse that has to be disabled. It's the rider! You don't do anything, rider! You just sit there! So, for example, these two fine chaps, they can't be in the Paralympics, but this... Lloyd's TSB Majestic Stallion could because his ride is missing a finger or an eyebrow or something. Now, I'm sure with a bit of research you'd find out otherwise, but people don't care. It's easier to think about it simply and get a laugh out of someone's rants. He's the comedian who says the stupid stuff and gets the laugh because it's somewhat based in the assumptions that people make themselves. It is relatable in its ignorance. During the last few months of 2014, in the wake of his son's success, Grade would upload multiple videos in the same format, just talking about stuff in this style. This would cement him as a creator and lead to significant and consistent growth throughout the coming few months. He would rant about Tinder, toilets, interviews, basically anything that bothered him. He'd become more and more creative with these gags, make longer content, but still hold on to many of the rather simplistic aspects of his videos, balancing that feeling of progression with the notion of familiarity, like upgrading a car rather than purchasing a new model. You still need to make people feel like they're watching a Grey Day under a video. When the video that we're discussing today came around, Ray was sat on a respectable 29,000 subscribers. His growth had been solid and steady, with occasional spikes aided by the algorithm. His videos typically surpassed his subscriber count and he was being aided by various supports on other websites. Obviously, I mentioned my encounter with the Facebook post. However, we're entering 2015 and you know what that means? Well, the start of a little genre called commentary. Leafy, who is someone I'm sure we'll talk about eventually, sat mid-February on around 23,000 subscribers. Fairly respectable, that's only because most of them came from a Minecraft PvP channel. However, under a month later, Grade would get his first taste of drama with someone known as Ray William Johnson. Ray William Johnson was one of the largest creators on the platform, and although he wasn't anywhere near his peak at this time, he was still pulling respectable numbers on his videos. The sort of numbers that I would dream about getting on a constant basis. He had a lot of successful ventures, so calling him out was a pretty big deal because you're going to be dealing with his still sizable fan base. This guy on over 10 million subscribers. So what happened? I'm late all the time. I am probably going to be late for work every day. So tell me about a weakness of yours. Oh my god, where to start? What would you say is your greatest weakness? Where do I start? Uh... Right, so where do you see yourself in five years time? Hopefully not still in this shithole. Where do you see yourself in five years? Not in this shithole. Well, shit. So 
understand the situation, we go back to the video before it, Why I Hate Interviews, in which Grey goes on one of his typical rants interspersed with his comedy that we've previously discussed. At some point in this video, he mocks up an interview and responds to it in a fairly candid fashion. Eleven days later, Ray William Johnson uploads the video How to Ace Job Interviews, a sarcastic title for a run of sketches in which the applicant provides the worst answers possible. However, some of these responses, more specifically, three of them had a strange resemblance to Grade's answers. And you know what? That's certainly not something to be ignored, especially when it's one of the site's largest creators, stealing from a significantly smaller creator. But what's Grade gonna do about it? Now we're in March 2015, commentary still hasn't emerged yet, but we're definitely in the rumblings of it. And I want to talk about drama for a brief moment for that reason. Drama always existed, especially when you're dealing with genres that involve personalities rather than just personas, which is why the gaming community, in spite of their relatively avoidant attitude to drama, did have their instance. Commentary in the last few years, however, has taken over the drama scene, because for many commentators, it is highly beneficial for their channel that they talk about drama. And it's like the media when they report on an Incident. Often it's not just the drama itself that garners the attention, but the people who actually cover it. You're always looking for the hot take from that one person you want to hear talk. With that said, Grey didn't have the same approach that many commentators do today. If I felt someone had ripped me off, unfortunately I wouldn't be able to turn around and make a 30 minute video, as fun as it might be. In fact, many commentators wouldn't want to make a video on someone who might have copied their joke because it would be seen as petty or going overboard. This is where we bring in Grey's style. Grey's comedy was found within big being excessive. His videos could also be very short and not really have much meaning. So he made this video questioning whether Ray had quote plagiarized him. He opened with the corresponding clips in question before doing this. Now listen, listen. Just to address anyone who might think that Ray copied my very similar uploaded suspiciously closely to my video. Now I'm here to let you know that he clearly didn't, could not have. Listen, I'm not gonna say that Ray William Johnson copied my video. I'm new to YouTube, so I don't know jack shit about what I can and cannot claim in my videos without, I don't know, lawsuits and stuff. So I'm gonna tell you that Ray William Johnson clearly did not copy my video. They are very different. Cause one's funny and one's not! Now this isn't the last time he would use this demeanor. What he's doing is he's using comedy as a masquerade to push quite genuine accusations. Grey's videos felt tongue in cheek enough to not necessarily take seriously in their tone. They were too self-aware and comedic to frame him negatively, but their arguments too well presented to completely ignore in their points. If we're speaking formally, you can't really prove that Ray was plagiarizing, because as concepts, they're a bit too general to be claimed. But it is very plausible that Ray did take the jokes. It does seem a bit too similar to be a coincidence. Gray's video on this quickly gathered traction and hit over 200,000 views in a few days. I mean, calling anyone out is always good for a quick rush of views. And although at first it wasn't universally well received, you can see the like-dislike ratio is still strongly in his favor. Compare this to a recent drama, for example, Coffee Break's video, which I do plan on discussing in the future. And because he mainly framed his problems very seriously, many people have now responded and began to call him petty, which has affected many people's feeling about the whole drama. As Grey goes, he's done pretty well. This was his first taste of drama, but not really much came beyond of it. There was an article written on the Daily Dot and a bit of buzz at the time, but Johnson never really responded because Grey was such a small YouTuber at the time, he would have been punching down fairly hard and he probably didn't want to Streisand it unless he had a concrete response, which would have been hard. So life went on. Grey did all right from the situation and decided to go back to the sort of content that people at that time knew him for. However, this was about to change again because now we're in June and a little known YouTuber by the name of Leafy was beginning to gather significant momentum. Grey in a similar position decide once again to make a different kind of video, this time calling out a YouTuber by the name of Richard Burgess, aka Vegan Gains. Basically a blatant bait video because Vegan Gains was known to respond to everyone. His video alleged that Vegan Gains was fairly dishonest in his content, unbelievably biased towards anyone on a vegan diet, and promoted a lot of misinformation that people should definitely take with a grain of salt. However, at the end of the video, Grey takes a slightly different approach. He damn good as well. But the ones now, they're just garbage. Now hopefully, I don't have to make any more videos about you. I've already made two other videos that are ready to be uploaded in like a second's notice, right? One of the videos that I have is one of his worst of the YouTube fitness industry videos that I stole when I hacked into Vegan Gain's computer. Because I'm a hacker, me, right? And it's one he didn't upload for very good reason. It's not one he would want you seeing, trust me. And as if that wasn't saucy enough, 
The other video that I've got is a personal video message to Vegan Games from a very fucking surprising source. Now this is where Great's very ambiguous tone comes into play. It's quite clear that he isn't a hacker, but it's still possible that he's managed to get his hands onto some sort of incriminating file. Vegan Gains is a volatile character, and it's not impossible to suggest that maybe there are a few deleted videos of him floating around the web that have him doing some pretty strong things. Gray presents him with the quote, ultimatum, respond or is going to make another video where he uploads everything. Listen, this is just me being a bit of an idiot, right? This is just playful banter, yeah? But listen, Vegan Gains, if you don't reply to this video and explain yourself and address all the points I've brought up in this video and explain your lies, right? I will take it as a personal insult and I will post both of them, right? Man, listen, I like you, mate. You're, you're a bit annoying here and there, but overall, I do like you, mate. Don't make me post those videos, man. So Vegan Gains decide to respond by, well, not responding. This clearly caught grade off because Vegan Gaines was renowned for going after people, and yet, like Donald Trump not responding to Eminem, the one time where you'd expect him to respond, he didn't. So when Vegan Gaines didn't respond, Grade uploaded the update video that threatened to release the three very important unseen videos, providing a specific due date, that being Saturday the 4th of July 2015. Once again, having this sort of due date makes Grade seem more serious and presents this to Vegan Gaines to encourage that response. He hypes it up and says we all need to tweet it at the Vegan Gaines nemesis and obtain their attention. Everyone's on the edge of his seats. What's Grade going to reveal? Well, not much. In fact, Grey was just bluffing. The third video was released, and the alleged clips were presented were not as expected. If you expected anything at all, that is. One of them was a cut-up compilation where, you know the one where you remix someone's speech to change the message. The second video, a special message from someone, was another meme. And the rest of the video was spent going through Vegan Gains' old channel and just digging up various comments. From one perspective, it could be seen as rather desperate from Grade to basically threaten someone into giving you their attention. And he makes it no secret, that's kind of what he was trying to do. Okay, now listen, if I'm honest, I said that if Vegan Games didn't reply to my previous video, that I would then release these other two, right? Which was a complete lie, like regardless of what he did, I was still going to upload them, right? And yet, coming out of it, he received very little criticism and appeared with a big W to his name. Why is that? Well, firstly, Vegan Games isn't really popular and people can't really feel bad for him regardless of whether he was right or not to respond and a lot of grades criticisms in his first video were fairly valid but the second reason this little stunt worked was because of his persona gray day under a in his comedy videos you don't really see that contrast too much but in these more drama oriented videos on one hand you have the gray day side that can deliver criticism and yet the uneven delivery and the messy tone and the comedy falls towards the under a side and this meant that as long as he acknowledged his intent with enough self-awareness, he'd typically receive a pass. This is interesting because while he emerged in a time where comedy dominated YouTube, clearly reflected in his style, we were entering a more dramatic phase. The times were changing and Grade had to change with them as well. But do that, we have to understand drama. The thing about drama is that there are various routes you can take. You can take the route of being the moralist, being the person who dictates how you should act, down to the small details, what words you should and shouldn't use, etc, etc, etc. If you want to deal criticism like that, you need to set an example of how to deal it. On the other hand, you have people who don't give a shit about 90% of things when they're criticizing others. And although this might seem less pure in many of their characteristics, it makes them harder to criticize. A great example of this is Idubs, another significant player later on in the story. Some people may criticize him for his fairly nonchalant approach to the use of certain words, as shown in the Tana Moncho content copy made. But he turns this around and says, well, I don't think that defines my morality. So take it or leave it. You can criticize him, but you can't really end him or cancel him because what he did was proxy to a much greater point against the target and regardless of how much Twitter would like to paint it as a black and white issue you'll experience very different attitudes with vegan gains grade isn't necessarily behaving morally in fact he comes across as a bit of a pest but he doesn't need to behave morally because he kind of acknowledges it and integrates it into his persona often acknowledging the fact that you're not perfect can humanize yourself in the eyes of your viewers while being able to deliver some sort of criticism 
criticism. In the instance of vegan gains that he is a liar, and being a liar is an easy criticism because it implies a logical falsehood. It's typically rather simple, unless you can appeal to a greater good, like a white lie. With the success of this drama, in spite of the disappointing lack of response, Grey would begin to start doing these sorts of videos a bit more regularly. And the thing is, I don't think a lot of people really noticed much difference in the videos, mainly because Grade had such a grip on his style. His character encompassed all those topics, and he definitely takes this going forward. His next targets were Jinx and CJ So Cool, two fairly unpopular reaction channels, were notorious for basically playing videos and reacting to them in a way that provided no level of transformation whatsoever. Grey's video on them was a lot tighter in its points and used pretty affirmative evidence to convey his sentiments. Now listen to this, right? It's like a 17 minute, 16 second video, right? Of which literally 45 seconds is not KSI's video. So CJ's video is literally over 95% KSI, right? Which is ridiculous. Obviously, they're going to get popularity if they're stealing some of the biggest YouTubers' content, right? That's so hard, isn't it? Now, what must have particularly pleased Gray in this situation was that Jinx actually responded. And he responded with all the grace that you'd expect from a reaction channel. Now, first thing I want to say before I even start going down this list is the fact that uh, this guy hates me because I'm popular. Because I'm YouTube popular. That is the one reason that it all boils down to. He could say he's not a hater. He could say all of that. But let's just be honest. And when you make a well-formed call-out video, going after channels who clearly think they are much better than they are, it feels good for the audience to be a part of that. The main reason it felt so good for Mayor Gray's fans was because Gray had intertwined it very delicately with his comedy. His comedy being rooted in that relatability of the judgmental nature. We've all seen some very successful YouTubers and thought, what the hell do they do that's special? They're rubbish. Gray took these thoughts and turn them into videos and combine them with more concise points and evidence to convince people of his case. So even when he was being fairly blunt, it felt natural because his persona allowed him to do that. Reaction channels are basically like a place for you to watch a video with someone else. What the fuck, mate? That's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. I might as well go out and buy a blow-up doll. It's less annoying than you. A response from Jinx, even like that, trying to be as indirect as possible is more attention because someone's going to ask Ask what the video is, someone's going to know and they're going to redirect it, especially if you're going after a larger YouTuber who is an idiot. Jinx had no personality, so trying to show any sort of anger felt like arrogance because it could only be correlated with his size, not his persona. Through this, however, Gray did create a fan base that were involved in the more dramatic side of Gray's work. And following this, he went after more easy targets. Nicole Arbor, prank channels, Nicole Arbor again, prank channels again, prank channels again and although these videos were fairly decent in a lot of their criticism with a fair amount of evidence when you spend so much time dishing out copious amounts of criticism in the sort of tone that gray did it became inevitable that he was going to grow out a channel much more drama oriented now looking back in retrospect it becomes clear that a lot of his more story time oriented content has outperformed his drama videos however at the same time his drama videos were some of the most popular on the site in the moment this was mainly because commentary was emerging with the people we've already discussed, and we were entering the stage where people felt comfortable calling others out. With the rise of three pretty pivotal channels, we could see the tone of criticism evolving. I identify these three channels as H3, iDubs, and obviously our main man here, Grade A Under A. All of these channels became torchbearers in calling out who they deemed to be twats. This then brought a secondary wave of channels who typically focus their content on other topics, but would often drop by on commentary issues, such as I hate everything, pyrocynical, leafy, boogie, and so on. It was something fun to involve yourself in. And on top of this, it created more attention to the topics that people were discussing. This was catalyzed by the numerous incidents at the turn of 2016, alongside the launch of iDubbbz's series, Content Cop, which basically set commentary on fire, particularly the Jinx episode, which of course almost led to the infamous boxing match. Don't get it twisted, Grey was one of the first on the scene to make these sorts of videos, with an already established audience that identified the style and therefore benefited of this development greatly. Equally, in a perverted way, the drama videos worked in the vein that his comedy videos did. Judgmental twats and relatability. We have those feelings towards those creators. That's why he went after unpopular people, because many people already hated them. When you're targeting other people, you have to be prepared to become a target. And 2016 was a new year for many reasons. Many reasons that we'll find out in the next video.
because this script is going to be very long and I've learned that it's probably not best to exhaust your audience to that extent. There are other videos definitely have had me trying. So that was the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to give a big shout out to my editors who've once again done a fantastic, beautiful job. I love them very much. Make sure you check them out. I also need to give a shout out to my Patreons, the current Patreons listed on the screen right now. And I also have to give special shout outs to my $50 Patreons, Connor, Some Hullabaloo, and Evening Steel. All three of you, thank you so much. It does genuinely make a difference, especially with YouTube's slightly unpredictable behavior recently. $100 to, I have to give the mention, Brandon and Ryan, truly incredible people and eternally grateful for their support. Thank you guys, it makes a big difference. Otherwise, if you want to, you can hit me up on Twitter, Discord, I even check Facebook sometimes, most of the platforms, and I do my best to be responsive. Otherwise, I don't really have too much else to say. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Opinions are always welcome. Until then, I'm The Right Opinion, and I'll see you in the next one. So whatever happened to that grade A under A fella? If you piss off grade A under A, he's gonna do whatever he can to ruin you. Grade, like all of us, is a liar. There's a different standard for you. It wouldn't be the first time you've lied. You've basically, you've lied a lot of times, mate. And there's a different standard for grade A under A. And he will ruin you if he can.